There we go. So, welcome to lab number five. The topic is nothing but an introduction to your final project. How you're going to do it as a group and as an individual. So what I mean by this is your final project has two parts to it. One as a group, other being as individuals. So, one as a group. Other part is your individual part. I should stop. Okay, so the thing is, as usual, we'll follow the same convention. It has to be four to five people. All of these information, before I start talking anything else, is written over here. However, I'm going to put some additional constraint, which is only applicable for my groups. And the idea is to somehow force, guide you guys to complete the final project in time. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be 45 people, 100 points, 70 being for the written report, 30 being for the oral points, and I'm, I'm certain you're going to do great. Um, so as a very abstract overall aerial view to this problem is this is a kind of a mini literature review. That is what this la uh, final project is about. So. This final project has a group report. It comes with a presentation. It must have four to five people in each group. Four being the least, five being the most. It doesn't change. And you cannot have three people, that's what I mean, explicitly speaking. So four to five papers that you have to come up with on some topic that we're going to talk about later. And the Bible for this is your handout and what I've said today in this lecture. So it's going to be handouts. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, as I've said, it has a group part and an individual part. Individual part consists of you guys coming up with your own writing on the paper that you will be contributing for your final project. And so, <clears throat> individual writing, it's a kind of an assignment. Individual write up. It's going to be of 100 to 200 words based on the paper that you are going to use in your project in the global scheme of completing this whole final project. The thing that I would request you guys to do is next class in lab number six, please write this down, it's not written here. So in lab number six, I would want you guys to provide me with the kind of an envelope can be any rudimentary, like, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be a file, it can just be a, like a huge paper, hard paper folded, so that I can place all your files gradually as you will submit things in the preceding labs. Leading to the final day where you present and submit the final topic. Does that make sense? Cool. So, I would request you guys to provide me with an envelope. How do you spell this? B E L O P, right? B E? Yeah. E? Yeah. Show E. Okay, envelope, kind of a file. Doesn't have to be expensive. Just so that I can stuff things inside and keep track of what you guys are doing as a team. Now, that being said, group and individual part has some local and global schemes. The global scheme is your final project for individual, and the global scheme for the group one is your final report and presentation. However, the local ones are segmented, and the segmentation has been explained in the 
PDF handout in the part where it talks about the project timelines. And in that timeline, you'll see week six, week seven, eight, and some subsequent things in those weeks that you'll have to do in addition to your usual week stuff. Like, in, say for instance, in lab number six, you're gonna do a lab work. And you'll have to submit one assignment in lab number seven. However, in lab number six, you will also have to submit some work that you've done for your final project to me. So that's what it means. So you will have things uh, that you have to do for your final project in the preceding labs as well, in other than your usual lab responsibilities. So I have like kind of designed this to be like two separate topics. One is a global scheme, as I said, and the local schemes, which I'm gonna explain now. So two ideas. One being global and the local ones. So two things. First of all, let us talk about a very higher abstract idea of this final project. The idea is you will have to come up with a team, four to five people, as I've said earlier, and come up with a topic that you would like to pursue more as a team. And based on that, you will select some papers which are relevant to the topic. And based on those selections and your readings, you will have to super summarize all those information in a very formal manner, provide a report and a presentation so that everything is linked and you can show relation. How those five papers are related, how they're related to the course, and how they are related to the topic that you want to select, or you have selected. Does that make sense till now? Any questions? No? Okay. So, as I've said, it's a formal brief miniaturized literature review and it has to be related to the course. So it has to be related to motor control and learning. And that being said, I'm gonna erase all this and talk about all the constraints that you will have. Did I do a mistake like took out all this thing? You should write this down maybe. Well, the envelope thing is something that you need to write. The other things you can skip too, because those are already there. So, the papers that you will select has a few constraints. First of all, it can be theory papers. So it's, it's gonna be four or five papers. It's not all the papers. It doesn't have to be evaluation type papers. It can be some theory and some evaluation mixed up. However, so, evaluation papers, evaluation, maybe theory papers, are mixed. As I've said earlier, four to five. Then, the papers that you come up with at the end must have a total number of combined citation of 200 to 250. What do I mean by that? I'll explain. But So it has to have a 200 to 250 or more. Uh, this is just the exclamation sign. Like, yeah. very, uh, you have to be very careful with that. So citation means that you are going to uh, find how many people have cited these papers that you've selected. The reason for that is that defines how good the paper was in the field. Sometimes you come across a paper which has a citation of trillion. It doesn't happen, but I suppose it does. And it's not, so the reason I'm saying this is it's not always citations. You also have to see how they cited it, whether it's a good one, whether it's a bad one. Say, for instance, a paper got a million citation and everybody said it's a horrible paper, doesn't say anything about motor control and learning, or whatever it said, it's wrong and flawed and false. There's no point selecting that paper if you think about it. So you have to come up with a constructive, constructive set of papers which makes sense in the global scheme of life 
like here being to me is 385. Um, okay, so how would you search this? Assuming you have a topic in your mind, maybe rehabilitation robotics or something interesting, other than this, write that topic down in scholar.google.com. It gives you a set of search results, right? In each search results, on the bottom left, for each search, you'll find the number of times it has been cited. So that's how you can understand. So, scholar.google.com. So any questions so far? So now you can understand how everything goes back, goes to the point of 200 to 250. So you have five papers, each paper has to be cited more than 50 times. So that leads up to the idea of 200 to 250, depending on how many people you have in the group. Four people, five into four, that's 200. 50 into four, that's 200. And then you understand how it goes, right? So, okay. So that's one set of constraints. And basically it's explained in the handout as well. So the thing that you need to be careful, you need to memorize that handout every single detail of it, because as you know, I usually look into every single word that you write. Um, so I will look into whatever things you've missed, and I don't want to, as I said, please be careful, because everything I cannot explain in the class. Uh, that being said, this is the global idea. Now let's go into the local ones. But before we dive into that, my question would be, do you have any questions regarding any of the things that I've talked till now? Uh, can you go to bullet point three again? Oh, okay, so this one? Yeah. So this one is, you will have to select four to five papers for your group, depending on how many people you have in the group. Each person are responsible. Each person is responsible for one paper. And as a team, you'll summarize those information, relate them, and relate this to this class, and relate that all, all of those to the global thing that you want to talk about, address. And the papers that you select has to have a total number of citation of 200 to 250. So each paper must have a citation of at least 50 or more. So we're going to be deciding individually between four or four or five of us, uh, 50 different pieces. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm glad I misinterpreted that. No, 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 no. <laughs> of course, I mean, remember, you'll, you're working with four to five papers. Yeah. Each paper will have a citation number of 50 to uh, 50 or more. That's the constraint. So that's how we know the paper that you've selected is a good paper. Because people in the field has cited that paper. Oh, okay, yeah. And maybe if you use scholar.google, you will see that they have, they have a way to summarize information, how they have cited it, where they have cited it. And you can just have a small glance to understand how they have cited it, positive or negative things. If it's all negative, there is no point selecting the paper, right? Any more questions? Cool. Okay, so let's go into the local schemes. So the local schemes being you guys will have to do something each in the preceding labs following this one, apart from the usual lab responsibilities, which are completely related with this final project. And that's, that will lead to the final project on uh, lab number 12 and 13. Um, so lab number six, which is the next day, the thing that you will do is as a team, you will come up with three different topics. Or more than one, actually, that's what I mean. So topic selection. You will come up with more than one uh, to three papers, uh, topics, in a written format with the file envelope and other things with the name of the team, with a fancy team name, maybe Apollo 15, 14, whatever. I don't know, I just came up with that. But, so that's why, so I can organize stuff. 
and you're gonna to come and talk to me why you want to talk about this. And I am going to check whether the topic that you are selecting has relation with the course, 385. If it is, I will give you the topic which is the one that you like the most. Otherwise, I'm gonna change and say, maybe advise you guys to do that other thing. Does this make sense? So the thing that you would like to do is when you select this topic, please have a, do a search, normal search in Google to see, Google Scholar to be precise, to see whether there are papers in this field of research. Because otherwise that would not make any sense. You select a topic and then end up finding no papers. That's horrible. So let's make sure that you can meet all the constraints of 200 and 250 citations when you select these topics. Just have a look into that. And maybe if you would like to go and read a little about some of the papers, in that case, my uh, advice would be just go through the abstract and the conclusion to get an idea about what the paper is about. Usually, it would not take you much time if you want. Then, if you want to dive a little more into it, go through the introduction. So if you think about it, if the paper is like 10 pages, this three will be like one paper or one page or something. So you'll be, like, you'll be able to track all this information. So that's my advice for topic selection. Select topic one to three, come to me with the original document saying that these are the things that I want to do. I'll check and say, okay, this is the thing that you have to do for the final thing. And when that is done, it is fixated. It doesn't change. Your team is fixated, doesn't change. So be careful. And the other thing is, as I've said earlier several times, stressed to be precise, that if you want, please change group, create new groups, make friends. So it doesn't have to be the same group all the time. But if you want, you can keep it. And when you select all these papers, the thing that you need to have your, in your mind is it has to be related to PNIS 385, motor learning and control. Otherwise, that doesn't make any sense to have a product like this. So you come up with this. I say, OK, this is the one. And then you start working on it. In lab number seven, the thing that you have to do is two folds. And this is a local scheme as well. So lab number seven is over here. And so here, assuming you have selected a topic, one topic is selected. And now you have to dive deeper. How? You as a team will have to come up with a series of papers, eight to 10. You know, I'm going to say why. Because you're going to reason why from this 8 to 10, you're going to select 4 to 5. So if you understand, each team member gets assigned to two papers. So two papers each. And this was 8 to 10 papers. And you're going to submit our written document summarizing the two papers that you have selected and reason why from those two papers you want to select one. It's going to be a 100 or 200 word uh, written assignment which leads to your, your individual assignment. So, if you think about it, 100 and 200 words is not so much. So two papers, two paragraphs, each having 50 to 100 words each, and that's it. Does this make sense? Now if you think about it, how does this serve in the global perspective? If you are done written, writing this, you have already have a glanced through the paper a little bit. And you know how the paper contributes to the idea of your topic, selected topic. 
and a lot of work has been reduced. So that's why in the initial phases, when you have a little stress during the semester, I emphasize you guys on doing this. Maybe you're commuting somewhere, doing something, having dinner, just glance through the paper and just write a small thing. That's it. And submit, I'm gonna place it in the file, and that's how I'm gonna keep track of it. So you're gonna reason why you select the final one based on the two papers. So you make reasons why you're selecting this one paper out of this two. And that will lead to the global idea of having four to five papers. Does this make sense? Now, yep. Yeah. When you write, please make sure you're writing in a formal stand, maintaining a formal standards. Meaning, make sure your spellings are correct, typos are not there, grammar is good, brief, a decent summary of how the thing is related to the global idea of the topic. And so, and the reason. So the reason, how it's related to the global idea, that's all I want here. Make sense? Lab number seven is done. Lab number eight, you work on your own. Lab number nine, we are gonna do, finish the individual project. So lab number nine, final submission of individual project. This is something that you'll find contrast with the PDF that I've handed out. As I've said, the reason is force guiding you to work as a team. And if you think about it, it's not so much, not too tough of a work. Crackable, trust me. If it wasn't, I would not have made you guys do it. Maybe some people might hate me, but at the end, you guys will be happy. Trust me. So, uh, this is individual report, which is the selected paper from the two that you have done. A little more writing of that. A final version saying how it's related to the course, how it's related to the final project as a whole. So 100 to 200 words. So if you think about it, you're just extending 50 or 100 words more from that usual writing. And that's how I know you are contributing to the whole team. Does this idea make sense? So this was a, these are local ideas which led to the final global idea of individual report. And now there is a slight other thing that you should write down is here I expect you to make the presentation a little bit too. So you're gonna give me a part of the presentation where you'll have the topic selected, all the names written there, so the introduction and the literature review. If you think about it, you have already made this and your presentation will just be bullet points of those points, right? If you think about it. So if you have a Google Doc somewhere in some space, electronic space, you can just copy paste stuff from there and organize all the stuff. Does this make sense? But there is something that you need to understand is people, when you work as a group, people have different writing patterns. So if you just copy paste information, you will find a huge dissimilarity between paragraphs. So there should be someone supervising the whole thing. Make sure your paragraph has one singular tone. And it, as I said, it has to be formal. And what else and what do I say? That, so, okay, about the presentation, very important point. I do not want to see a complete sentence in any of your presentations. It is just going to be bullet points leading to the complete idea that you're gonna present in the class. And not a complete statement, other than the title. I mean, it would not make any sense if you have like this bullet point in the title. So, uh, as I said, I love make jokes, but. So, 
And always, everything that you do has to be related to this course. Any questions so far? So by lab number nine, you have some part of your final project presentation. You have your final individual report. Now you just need to sit down, talk with your friends, groupmates, to see how those all relate to the global scheme of the topic that you have selected. And write down a super summarized version in a, in a complete paper. And someone supervising the whole thing so that the tone is singular. And you're done with the break. Final thought. And so, from lab number nine to lab number thirteen, you are on your own. That doesn't mean you can't come to me and talk about it. You can always come, and you will see that we have scheduled things here, which you'll have to follow, other than the things that I've talked about. So, lab number nine, you have progress checking during class, work on papers and presentation, all the stuff. But so every week you're gonna give me some kind of report what's going on and whatnot in class during other labs. Just coming over to me, we're gonna have like a five minute talk about it, that's it. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk, talk about a small example about the theories and the stuff that I was talking about, like the theories and the evaluation paper, so an example. And since I love rehabilitation robotics, that would be my example topic. That doesn't necessarily imply that you will have to follow the same thing. You can choose your own likings. You can choose to your own likings. It doesn't have to be what I do or what I like. So. So an example idea. One, rehabilitation. Robotics. So there are different rehabilitation robots out there. You can select Locomat, which is a horrible one. Locomat, or you can select the MIT angle block. Or MIT Manus. It's weird. Manus in Bengali, in my language, means human. But anyways, <coughs> that's a random story and we don't have an age over here. Uh, you can select any of those. So the theory paper would mean what are the properties of these robots? How are these pro pro robots designed? How they work? There might be equations there. Don't have to worry about those. Just give us, give us the idea. What are the characteristics, the features? Who uses them? How they use them? And stuff like that. And the evaluation papers will be things that they have done with this robot in an attempt to help people getting rehabilitation. So this is one idea. Now. Given this idea, we will now have a look into other possible domains that you might want to explore. Those being over there, advances. The first one would be advances in theories and models of motor control. The key word is motor control. It has nothing to do with learning. So you are going to come up and talk about things that uh, explains how humans or animals, not, let's skip to, uh, to humans. Uh, how they make decisions while they move. You have seen one or two examples, like the feed forward control system in class, I guess. And then you have also had a little introduction to feedback control theory, something like that. However, there are other things that has been explored by researchers. Those may equilibrium point theory, internal model control, optimal control theory. In optimal control theory, it is an idea how our brain creates an optimal decision as they move, move. 
One of the pioneers in this field is Dr. Daniel Wolpert. If anyone is interested, might want to have a look into him. Dr. Daniel Wolpert. He's at Cambridge, working with neuroscience and engineering. He has a wonderful TED talk where he stresses on the idea that we have a brain just to move. That's the sole purpose we have the brain. He also talks about a very amazing concept, which is tit for tat, in a mathematical way, and shows that how it works. The mathematics is very simply, uh, a very, I mean, it has been talked in a very simple way, so you'll be able to follow it, and you will love it, and you will understand tit for tat would not bring world peace. That's an um, implicit assumption that I made from his TED talk, but you might have a different example. <clears throat> then, uh, dynamical systems theory, how they have been used to explain motor control. Moreover, there are adaptive control theories. These are advanced things that you haven't been exposed in this class. However, when you want to have a look into those papers, you will find a lot of equations, horrible equations. And I, to be honest, do not pretend to understand any of those. So I do not expect you guys that you will understand it. However, they also talk about the things in like a little more literature type abstract. So you will get the idea of what they're talking about through examples of things that they have shown or through experiments. So do not get like, do not feel uh, hostile when you see equations. Just go and read the stuff, the idea that you get, write it down, that should be fine. Um, so, this has a lot to do with engineering, mathematics, applied sciences, statistics, probability theory, and you will see how all this relates and gives us information about how we make decisions as we move. I'm certain you're gonna love it. Maybe some of you guys will shift from kinesis to applied mathematics, who knows? Guys, you never know. Um, so the next topic would be, neural basis of motor diseases. So the example is, people have talked about Parkinson's diseases and they have been researching about this and trying to figure out how is this happening. And research has shown that Parkinson's disease is related to basal ganglia. So maybe you want to have a look into those kind of papers to talk about Parkinson's disease, how are the interventions designed, how are people helping them to rehabilitate and so many other things. So then there is stroke that we all know about, how it occurs and how, what are the different type of, types of stroke, the paralysis of the some side or the limb, the hemiparetic guides, and so many other different things, which leads to rehabilitation and then leads to rehabilitation robotics. Then there is another interesting concept, which is cerebral palsy. It is a kind of a stroke as well, but for kids. If I'm not mistaken, it's, it usually occurs while they're at the womb. So maybe you guys want to have a look into that, if some of you are interested in that. Spinal cord injury, and so many other things. One of the examples that you will eventually see in your course is when you learn about neurons, which is coming in a few, in a few weeks, where Dr. King would talk about how the exons degrade and leads to the idea of multiple sclerosis. So these are neurobiological uh, topics that you might be interested in and would like to pursue as a group. So, so maybe you can have a look into those. Now let's go to the, my favorite topics. It's assistive, te assistive technologies and motor control and learning. So let's talk about prosthetics. When you want to look into prosthetics, the first thing that you might want to look into is Dr. Todd Smithen. He has an MD, a PhD, and so many other good things. Um, Dr. Todd Quicken is with Northwestern University. Northwestern University, Chicago, most probably Evanston. That's how you say it, I guess. 
He's working at RIC, one of the finest rehabilitation centers in the US. And to be precise, one of the finest in the world. The finest in the world, if I have to be precise. And I would want to work as a postdoc there one day, if I want to do a postdoc. He's working with prosthetics. He's a doctor by training and also an engineer. He came up with this surgical intervention thing where an amputee, amputed person who has all the nerve endings still remaining at the edge of the uh, amputated section, he found a kind of a surgical way of amplifying those nerve signals and fuse those signals with a robotic arm. And just by making, just by thinking, he demonstrated through a TED talk and also through some papers how that helps people. So just by thinking, the lady in the TED talk was able to do basic rudimentary things, which gives us a hope that maybe we have a better future out there for people who are amputated. Life is not so, not independent, that's how I would, how I would put it. So please have a look at this TED talk. You will be amazed. I was, for sure. So, um, orthotics. Maybe you would like to have a look at Dr. Shao Wexler, S-H, S-H-A-I-A-O, W-E-C-K-S-L-E-R, Wexler. She is working with University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign with the mechanical engineering department. She's a graduate of Berkeley, did, a, did her PhD over there, now working with orthotics, designing assistive devices for people who has trouble with hemiparetic guides or something, balancing and other issues. Amazing work. You might want to have a look into her work. She is leading the biomechanics lab over there. Then we'll talk about exoskeleton. And when we talk about exoskeleton, the first thing that would come to my mind is Dr. Dave Akin at the University of Maryland, Terps. So, Dr. Dave Akin. He's with the aerospace department. Uh, the name of his lab is Space Systems Lab. And you will realize from, that, from his lab that he works with astronauts. And he's designing exoskeletons, so power suits, so that astronauts, while walking in space or doing whatever, it's easier for them to move with that heavy thing that they have, astronaut suit or whatever. So you might want to have a look into it. So exoskeleton ideas you can take from there. He directed the space systems lab in MIT before 1990. Then the whole team from MIT transferred to the University of Maryland and making the one of the most finest aerospace department in the country. So in terms of control and control and dynamical systems. Um, so that's Dr. Dave Akin. Can I release this? Then we're gonna talk about brain computer interfaces where you have something in your head, a kind of a cap, and you take out signals, do something with those signals, and you can do amazing things. People have tried doing flight simulating, like fighting an airplane with having those in, his, in their mind. However, it's not the real plane, it's like a simulator, so everybody was lying at the end. Uh, so you might also want to have a look at Dr. Tim Brittle. Brittle, B-R-E-T-L, I guess, I'm not exactly sure, with all respect to Dr. Tim Brittle. Uh, he is at UIUC, University of Illinois, Arbor Champaign, Aerospace Department, a graduate from Stanford, working with brain machine interfacing. There are people, a few days earlier I saw a video where people would do this, and a quadrocopter will make a move like this. The problem is the next day it doesn't work because your brain makes changes when you sleep, when you like wake up from sleep. So those are cool things that is, that's going on. Maybe you might be interested in those. So that's brain-computer interfacing for you, Dr. Tim Breville over here. Now, PT and rehabilitation technologies. 
let's talk about rehabilitation robotics, my favorite topic. Uh, so, we have, among us, in this university, not in this campus though, in the Baltimore campus, working with veteran affairs, and working with the MIT, Dr. Neville, I'm certain I made this wrong, his name is, but Neville Hogan, that's his name. So Dr. Neville Hogan from MIT, and some other, Dr. Hugo Krebs and others, and Dr. Onindoroy from our university, working with lower extremity robotics, rehabilitation robotics, using the MIT angle model. The most amazing part of Dr. Amazing feature of Dr. Onindoroy is, which I found interesting, was he is a trained engineer. He did his everything in engineering and sciences. Later, he had a postdoc from MIT from Dr. Neville Hogan's lab. Then later, he did his another postdoc from Georgia Tech, and he became a neurologist. Now he's a professor in the Department of Neurology in the School of Medical um, at the University of Baltimore, University of Maryland. So um, that's Dr. Ronnie Leroy. He's working with the MIT ankle spelling wrong. MIT ankle bot. Now, if I think about all this, there is another guy who is super amazing. He works at MIT, and the department name is Media Lab. I guess some of you have had a chance to hear about it. It's MIT Media Lab. The name of this guy is Dr. Hook Heron. He leads the biomechatronics team. They're designing bionic limbs. He's, two of his, both of his legs are amputated. And his team came up with a solution to his amputated legs. They're designing control systems for it. And he one day expects that people will be able to feel through their bionic limbs and it's not so far away. So you might want to have a look into Dr. Hugo Herr, MIT Media Lab. And the name of the team is Biomechatronics. If you are interested, search the word mechatronics. If you write it in a Word document, it will give error. But it, this word does exist, and it's an amazing term combining all different engineering fields. So maybe you want to have a look into that. <coughs> that being said, I'm interested in this guy. I might be doing my thesis with it. I'm not sure. But who knows? Um, anything else? Nope. Oh, there is. Neural imagery. Maybe you would like to do your final project on neural imagery featuring fMRI images, MRI images, CD scans, or what else and what not. And how they contribute in helping us understand how we move or helping us understand how to rehabilitate people, or what are the changes that occurs in our brain plasticity level that helps us maybe move. I'm, I'm, I'm talking abstract things. I, I, I don't pretend to understand any of those, but uh, just a general idea so I, can, I could direct you guys to things that I know about or have some idea about. And there is also trade mail exoskeletons for walking rehabilitation. We have talked about that. MIT Manus that I've talked about earlier is an upper extremity rehabilitation robot, extensively used, uh, now kind of commercialized too. Uh, so you might want to have a look into those. Now, the last topic would be applications of motor control and learning principles to coaching physical education or training. So you can select this as well. So as you can understand all the things that I've talked about till now, has a lot to do with motor control and learning. That's the idea. So the paper that you come up with doesn't have to be any of these. It can be any of the other things that I've talked about. Things that I don't, I, I might not understand, but I will understand through you guys. And I, trust me, I'll, I'll read, I'll, I have to read a lot of, for this, because with the papers that you select, I have to read those as well. That's the work. That being said, the final thing. 
how to succeed in this final project. As I have said earlier, this is very simple. Work as a team, man. I mean, this is all you need. I mean, make friends, work as a team, help each other. At the end, make decisions to save the world. With that, I'll end um, me introducing lab number five, talking about the introduction to the final project. <laughs> Anyways, guys, please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Guys, ask questions. Teacher threatening students in video, YouTube. That's horrible. Uh, please, any questions? Guys, ask me questions. Still, like two or three minutes, please. I have a question. Um, are you going to put maybe like some, some a list of these people that we can research on? Oh, I will. I will. So, going back home, I will start writing all of these because these are things that I have put in addition to the things that you will have to do, which is explained in the handouts, but explicitly for my labs. So, I will send you all of these documents, including the video and the PDF and the presentation if it's not already uploaded so that you can have a look into it. I would request as a team, please look into all of these and underline the most important things. Make a small note of things that you will have to do. I mean, you might think like, I've talked about so many different things and like, uh, you might be overwhelmed. Trust me, it's simple. Just select five papers at the end, summarize those, show, it, show how all those papers are connected to the topic that you have selected. And at the end, write down your own individual reports, make a presentation, that's it. There is not much in it. It's just me giving you so many information about so many random different things that you might feel overwhelmed. Please. So it says only one group per section is represented on each general topic. Are you going to assign the topic to yeah. present on, or is it possible? So the first day you provide me with three topics, right? From that I select. The thing is, say for instance, you're talking about neurorehabilitation, you might talk in a different scheme from an another group, right? I mean, the, the global idea can be same, but the approach can be completely different, right? I'll just make sure you don't end up having the same papers. Because that would not make any sense, I mean. Uh, we, because we also would like each of uh, you guys to learn about things from each other. Um, yeah, I will, I will take my time in writing all of these. Uh, and as I've said before and always, send me emails. No question is a silly question. If I know the answer, you'll get it. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. I don't know it, I'll get back to you. And if I'm awake, I'll always reply to your emails. And usually, I am awake. So <laughs> that's bad, but that's not good, guys. Why would you see if it's good? Uh, so, I'll get back to you guys.